Liberal Viewer presents. So back in January, I made a video titled, Is It Just Corporate Free Speech?, which ended up being controversial with many people with whom I usually agree, because I defended a Supreme Court decision protecting the right of people to speak and spend money on advertising and elections, even if those people are speaking or spending on behalf of corporations, and a frequent criticism I got in the comments to that video was the claim that corporations would be able to buy elections by outspending opponents with some even going so far as to call it the end of democracy, even though I pointed out in my video that having the most money has never guaranteed a win in American elections, and this month an election in California proved my point because there were two measures on the ballot backed by corporations that outspent their opponents by over 10 times in one case and by over 50 times in another, and still couldn't convince voters to make the wrong choice. As an editorial titled, Voters Get Wise to Sly Corporate Power Plays by Dan Moraine in last week's Sacramento Bee explained it, quote, Proposition 16 backed by PG&E's $47 million to the opponent's $90,000 and Proposition 17 backed by Mercury Insurance's $16 million to less than $1 million for its foes lost by nearly identical margins. PG&E and Mercury join a select few corporations that came up with way too clever concepts then tried to sell them to a supposedly disengaged electorate notorious for deciding weighty issues based on 30-second television ads, only to find out that we Californians aren't so gullible after all." Unquote. And the gullibility factor came in because of the Orwellian way the corporations tried to sell these laws to voters, with a big power company in the case of Proposition 16 titling the law the Taxpayer's Right to Vote Act, even though the law actually took away the right of local elected officials to form nonprofit utility districts, giving better deals to consumers without getting a two-thirds supermajority vote of the electorate. And in the case of Proposition 17, insurance companies tried to get the right to increase rates on drivers who have not been continuously insured by calling it a reward for the other drivers, titling the law the Continuous Coverage Auto Insurance Discount Act. But despite all the spin and all the money from the corporations, the opponents of these initiatives had a powerful message they could take to voters, as demonstrated by Harvey Rosenfeld, a consumer rights watchdog opposing Proposition 17, who asked KABC TV viewers this question before the election. When was the last time an insurance company spent millions of dollars to save you money? <laughs> and that's the thing about the Supreme Court protecting corporate spending on issue advertising as free speech. As corporate spending increases on an issue, it starts to look more and more suspicious to voters, especially because a part of campaign finance law the Supreme Court upheld in its recent decision was the disclosure requirements that let voters know who's spending the money for all those ads. So as long as the less well-financed side has at least some ability to get out its message, the influx of large amounts of corporate cash into election advertising isn't going to guarantee corporations a victory with voters. At least that's what I think, but I want to know what you think. Given that corporations couldn't buy the results they wanted in these low-turnout off-year California primary elections, doesn't that prove corporate money just isn't that overwhelming a factor in these kind of elections? And applying the lessons of this election to the controversy about that Supreme Court decision? Isn't this latest evidence of the ineffectiveness of corporate spending in winning elections just more proof of the overreaction of those who claimed it was the end of democracy when the Supreme Court ruled that corporate spending on election advertising is protected free speech? I YouTube, you decide.